all the best boxing content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and punch that bell for notifications. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now time for our featured bout. It is scheduled for eight rounds of boxing in the junior middleweight division, and it is being brought to you by Lou DeBella's DeBella Entertainment, along with their great sponsors, Manfredi Auto Group. Shop the Manfredi Way on Highland Boulevard in Staten Island for your best deal. And Everlast, our three judges, scoring on a 10-point must system will be Julie Letterman, Kevin Morgan, and Don Trella. When the bell rings, our referee in charge, the third man in the ring will be Eddie Cotton. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the historic Roseland Ballroom here in New York City, this is our Broadway Boxing Main Event. <laughs> Introducing to you first to my right in the blue corner, he's wearing black with silver and weighed in at 155 pounds. Coming to us from West Memphis, Arkansas, he brings a professional record consisting of six wins, three defeats, with three of his six wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Donald the Bulldog Ward. And his opponent across the ring fighting tonight out of the red corner. He's wearing black with gold and weighed in at 160 and a quarter pounds. Hailing from Brooklyn, New York. His professional record consists of 13 wins, just one defeat. One draw with four wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Boyd, the Rainmaker, Nelson. All right, boxers, uh, you received our instructions. Obey my commands and protect yourself at all times. All right, let's touch gloves. I expect a good, clean fight. Let's go. Our main event, final fight you'll ever see here in Roseland. Boyd, the Rainmaker, Melson taking on Donald Ward. Hey, Brian Adams, I'm telling you, it's the final fight here at Roseland. It's the main event as Melson comes out. Of course, in those gold trunks, day in the black trunks, we got a Hall of Famer with us and Steve Farhood, but let me tell you something, we got the first lady of boxing with us. <laughs> the one and only Rosie Perez here sitting with us and gonna help us call this fight. How are you? I am fantastic. <laughs> I am fantastic. I'm excited to be here, but I cannot compete with a Hall of Famer like Mr. Steve Farhood. So. <laughs> you don't have to compete. Rosie has become not has become, she's been a boxing fan for years, but thanks to Twitter mainly. Oh who, my uh, goodness. You've right, become yeah. a, a yeah. symbol of boxing fans throughout the country. Yes, I it's came out wonderful. of the closet. Twitter helped me. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever miss a fight? Hardly, hardly. When did you first get into it? Um, I got into it like around seven or eight years old. Um, I didn't understand what I was watching, but it excited me. And, you know, when I started to understand the sweet science i really got into it you know, and I, I i just love it melson of course in the gold trunks day in the black trunks and you talking about you know melson has some problems making weight for this fight steve he had a lot of problems the contract for this weight was originally 154 which is what melson's been fighting at it's cold out there it's hard to lose weight this time of year in new york city and he couldn't get down past 160 and then he weighed in yesterday and he was still overweight so that's a challenge for him and he looks bigger Lands a good left hand there. He looks like the bigger man because he's obviously rehydrated and probably weighs one uh, over 170 right now. We've talked a lot about how this is the last boxing fight here at Roseland. This, this place has had so many great fights. What do you recall? If you look back over the number of years being here at Roseland, seeing all the fights. Oh gosh, what do I, uh, you know what I recall is the fans. Um, it's it's that's the reason why I always came back to Broadway boxing because it's so exciting and it's it's just pure heart in the audience as well as in the ring. I love it. I love it, and I'm gonna miss it. I'm gonna miss coming here. Have you gotten into the um, whole aspect of the female boxing, Rosie? 
you know, I've been following Heather for quite some time. I actually uh, uh, interviewed her on WNYC for NPR when um, they were lead following Clarissa Shields for the Olympics. Um, and I fell in love with her. I fell in love with her boxing and her heart. And she's a real, she's a real beast in there. <laughs> <laughs> she had to be tonight. She had to be tonight. She took a couple of licks tonight. She's talking about Heather Hardy, of course, the first lady of Devella Entertainment. So you've been watching boxing since you were seven to eight. Who's your favorite all-time fighter? All-time fighter? Hmm. Think about it. Let's get I would back say to the front. Okay. Yeah, think about that as we find wrap up here the first round. It's a round that Nelson has connected a couple times with the left hand. Just ran circles around um, his opponents and then just tagged them and, 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 and went for the win. Do you, you have a favorite now? Oh, yes. Who we got? I have to say Mayweather and <laughs> Triple G. Yes, and, Triple uh, G. Yeah, I love, I'm, I'm loving Danny Garcia. Um, you know, and everybody loves Paulie. Paulie puts on a good show. <laughs> <laughs> Good first round from Nelson. Yeah. Interesting challenge here for Ward because he's never fought a lefty in the pros before. Took this fight on 10 days notice. Obviously didn't have much time to prepare for a lefty by sparring with one. That's why he should not even think about a lefty. He should just get in there and do what comes natural. Don't think about having a southpaw stand in front of him. Nelson kind of snuck him there with a little right hook. And comes back with a big left hook. So, Rosie, you mentioned the tweet science, which is, of course, an old term. So, if you see someone now boxing, being elusive and defensive, do you consider it boring? No, I don't. Like, if you take someone like Rigondeaux, um, I find him very exciting to watch. I find um, Floyd Mayweather very exciting to watch. Um, you know, to avoid a punch and then to, to you know, come back and, and, hit and tax someone clean, and it's crazy. And, and yes, you know, everyone loves a slugfest, but to me, a slugfest can get very boring. Well, I tell everybody, I'm glad you said that, but I tell everybody, the hardest thing to do in boxing is to actually make another trained professional miss repeatedly. That is very hard to do. It's very hard to do. Okay. Continues to tag Mo Nelson. What is doing the right thing about working the body? Mm hmm series of right hooks that connected to Boyd Nelson. So what are you seeing in this fight early on, Rosie? I think that, um, oh, that was a nice shot. I think that Nelson needs to just hit the body and take his wind away. There he goes. There he goes. Combination. He must have been listening. He must have been listening. He went right to the body of Patrick Day. I can see it now. Rosie's taking my job. I know. Like two months. We're, we're out of work. We're I'll do something work. else. That's uh, all right, Rosie. <laughs> Maybe Steve get into acting. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Some people will tell you I've been acting by being an analyst. All this year. Oh. They just missed with that right upper hook, uppercut. Nelson a little more aggressive, I think, than we've seen him in a lot of his Broadway boxing. He's, he's primarily a boxer, but I think because of his, his size advantage in this fight, again, he comes in at middleweight, and Ward came in at junior middleweight. I think that's one of the reasons he's probably being a little more aggressive. It's a nice combination at the bell. Boyd Nelson, Patrick Day. A Donald Ward. Donald who Ward. Lost to Patrick Day. Who lost to Patrick Day. Rosie Perez, we want to thank you so much for stopping by. Oh. By the way, I have to just proudly say you are the Grand Marshal at the International Boxing Hall of Fame induction weekend last year. That was okay. your introduction to, to, box, to the big time boxing, and you were fantastic. And uh, thank thanks you. for stopping by with us. It's uh, my pleasure, and uh, I'll be up there again this year. That's and, great. Um, and congratulations again. Thank you, well Rosie. Deserved. I appreciate it. Well I know deserved. I'll see you next at the fight. I'm telling you, this broadcast can't get any better. A there Hall of go. Famer, <laughs> an Oscar <laughs> nominee. I mean, what more do we need That's here? It. <laughs> That's great. Thank All you, the best, Rosie. Rosie. Thank you, guys. I got to get appreciate you at the Golden Gloves this year. Oh, okay. Yes, definitely. At Barclays. Okay. Nelson connects with a right hook. 
That's right. We have a fight going on, don't we? We do. Well, Boyd is doing the right thing by being aggressive. Steve mentioned he's predominantly a boxer, which he is. But with the added weight, six, seven pounds heavier than the, your opponent, you have to be aggressive. Jump right on him. Here's another little quick right hook by Nelson. The boy's showing a good right hook tonight, and it's not a surprise because he's a natural righty, even though he fights as a southpaw. Here's a combination. Ward came back with a right uppercut. mentioned Nelson more of a boxer than a puncher but on the night back in 2012 when he fought Dellen Parsley on Broadway boxing that was just a brawl Yo, might goodness. have been the best fight One we've ever had absolutely. Yeah, in the hit nine year history of this series it's like guys were going down left and right both these guys he'd knock him out he'd knock him down he'd knock him down and it was just what a fight well that's the second best fight that I've seen that I've called first one being Jeffrey Resto and Michael Ward that's way back um, but Nelson and Dylan Parsley certainly Second best to that. Now, does Boyd Melson have a cut on his right it eye? Looks like there's a little something there. Maybe the eye right. Yeah. Can't tell if it's cut or just an abrasion. Well, he, he got butted um, last round when we were really interrupted by Rosie Perez there. He got butted and um, he was complaining about it. Yeah, and he is bleeding now because it's yes, coming down is. his cheek. Yeah. <laughs> Ward, right hand to the body of Nelson. Final seconds. Boy, Nelson working on that cut. He's getting a mouse under his left eye. You would think, boy, Nelson didn't win this fight at this point. guys talking about Nelson he kind of loads you to sleep he looks like he's going to come in with that right hand ball, and then he brings that left and not only right that back. not only boy it doesn't look like he has uh, power behind his shots but when he lands he hurts he hurts guys here's another left hand by Nelson It's easy to forget, you know, we've had Boyd Melson on so many times on Broadway Boxing. It's easy to forget that he was a top amateur. He had a very yes. impressive amateur career. He fought some really good fighters and was ranked very high as an amateur. Mm, Ward coming back with some good hooks to the body. Ward's doing Boyd the right Nelson. thing by pounding that body on the inside. Although Boyd is taking the shots fairly well. Now Boyd is trying to shake out that, um, that right arm. Yeah, I wonder if there's an mm -hmm. injury there. He has thrown two left hands, not the right yet. Yeah, he just threw a short oh, jab and he right winced. Hook. Yeah, boy threw a jab yeah, and he winced. He's hurt that right hand. You see him trying to shake it out. He's a lefty, so don't expect to see many jabs coming from Nelson. You can see him. He's just using the left hand now. Now, Donald Ward should be moving to his left. Force Boyd to throw either that jab or that right hook. Force him to throw that right hand. And would you hit that other hand, that other arm that's hurt? Just throw some Why shots not? at it? Why yeah, not? Right. And if I were Melson, he should think about turning orthodox so that his good hand is his lead hand. Mm -hmm. I think that's much more valuable than having it as the backhand or the power punch. I mean, could be, Steve. Could be, but maybe... He's not that comfortable moving right. for an orthodox stance. Well, I never remember him fighting orthodox, do you? I, I don't recall no. him turning turn and switching. So, But he hasn't thrown a right hand since that grimace and since that injury. And Donald Ward has to pick up the fact that the right hand has yet to come this round. Nelson is all left. My heart goes out to him. I know the feeling. Reminds me of um, 
Watching Berto Soto Carrasa. They yes. love him. Berto hurt his. Berto and fought with, with one hand. Right, right hand. He lost the fight. And actually scored a knockdown just mm -hmm. before getting stopped. So tough, uh, tough fight for Melson here. Yeah. He's a one-handed fighter right now. He is. Oh, there's a right oh, hand. There's a right hand. Where'd that come from, Brian? <laughs> that, was the, that was the injured wing. <laughs> Yeah, it's not like you can do when you do your defense, in your defense, you might change. It's a little bit different. You heard that the corner there, Lloyd Melson basically saying he had no right hand. He said he heard a nerve in that right hand, but he said he's a sucker for the straight left. <laughs> <laughs> and what you got to love about Boyd Melson is he named the nerve that's yeah. injured. He said it's probably the something or other nerve. I didn't hear what he said, but Boyd Melson's career outside of boxing is, is, is in medical equipment. He's a very, very smart guy. We told you he gives all his money to stem cell research, mm -hmm. and he knows inside out about spinal cord injuries. I mean, he's a very, very bright guy and a West Point graduate. These two exchange on the inside. I was over in Boy Melson's corner in between rounds, and I talked to his trainers. He has a nerve problem in his elbow. He's, he's all right. It happens occasionally to him. Um, but they say, he, you know, he's all right. He happens a lot training. He'll be fine. Yeah, I think I heard the word temporary used in the corner. So he's hopeful at least that that right arm can be used again. But he's not throwing too many right hands. I haven't seen one yet this round. There's a, there's a nice exchange by both guys. Check right hook there by Nelson. <laughs> Nothing but left hand by Melson. Now, we talked about adjustments Melson may have to make because he has one, one good arm right now. I would think the slower the pace, the better. Because Absolutely. in exchanges, you, know, you need both hands in exchanges. And you need that right arm to protect your, your face and your head as well. And there's a jab, but he didn't look too comfortable throwing it. Listen, he can throw it, but as long as he don't snap it, he'll be fine. And if there's ever a time to pick up the pace for Donald Ward, it's now. And mm -hmm. he is not doing it. But how can you not realize that the guy's only throwing, not using both hands? Well, if you don't realize it, your corner should at least realize it. That's what they're there for. But realizing that Melson is a one-handed fighter and doing something about it are two different things. He's doing nothing about it. <laughs> More left hooks by Melson. One hand, and he's controlling the pace. Well, this is a scheduled eight round. Awards never been past six rounds. No seconds of this round and Nelson. Brian Adams pointed out one hand controlling the pace. You can see the welcome back here. You can see the doctors checking out that arm of Boyd Melson. And, and I disagree with that, and I'll tell you why. First off, the, the, New, the New York State Athletic Commission does a wonderful job with respects to safety. But I disagree because Boyd hasn't been in any trouble. It's not as if one hand is hampering him. So that's why I disagree with that. I don't know. I, I, I think I probably disagree with you there, Brian, because if, if, if the fighter is showing that the injury is clear, I think it's, it's incumbent upon the doctor to at least check it out. I'm not saying he should even think about stopping the fight for the reason that you just said, but I think he's, it, it, he's to be responsible. He's got to check out at least what the problem is. That's fair. That's fair. But I just automatically equate doctor going and checking you out as they have it in mind to stop it. That's what I just sort of Mackley equated to. Well, I think I'm thinking back to Yuri Foreman in Yankee Stadium when he fought Cotto and he couldn't walk and they let the fight, Arthur McCanthy Jr. let the fight go on for three, four rounds like that. 
Yeah, when it was first stopped. Well, the corner, Joe Greer right. tried to stop the fight. And <laughs> Arthur says no. Right. How about that? Moore pushes Floyd Nelson. See, Nelson's being forced to do a lot of thinking in there and to be clever in there. How can I kill some time, slow the pace, keep my right arm dangling, and yet still not get hit? And he's doing a good job of it. Yeah. But part of the reason he's doing a good job of it is because Ward's not picking up on it and pressing the, pressing the pace. And again there, Boyd Melson threw a right hook and then shook his right arm afterwards. It is just disappointing to see um, Donald Ward not even try to make Boyd Melson throw that right hand. Good exchange by both guys here. Body shots by Ward, and Nelson came back with a good right hook. A left hook. These rounds are pretty close because neither guy's doing very much, but. To me, they're successful rounds for Melson because his cut is not an issue, and he's getting by with the with the right arm dangling, and he's barely using it. Stop right there, stop. You hit on the head, Steve. Slow the pace, the better for Melson. Seventh round between Boyd Melson. Donald Ward, you see, saw Melson there uh, loosen out that right arm. Heard it a, three rounds ago. Hasn't really used it as much. As most we've seen him use that right hand in basically three rounds. And, and I must say this, listening to the corner of Donald Ward this last, the last round. So this is where loyalty hurts fighters. He's probably loyal to his corner, been with his corner for a while. They told him absolutely nothing in between the last round. Nelson getting a little more active with that right hand. Yeah. And I think the reason for that is we're in round seven of an eight rounder. He realizes he can maybe see the finish line. <laughs> And however badly that arm or however numb it is or however badly hurt it is, he can worry about that tomorrow. Here's the left hand by Melson. Listen, the military guy, such as Boyd was, pain means nothing. <laughs> That's right. You know he's mentally tough. Yeah, he used to stand up in between rounds. Remember those, some of those fights we do? He would never sit down. What was interesting being a Boyd Melson fights because he always used to have the, the West Point, West Point cadets, cadets. Yep. at the fights. And because he does so much work with spinal cord injuries, there'll always be uh, some disabled people in wheelchairs at, at his fights. He's a very generous, uh, loving guy. And he's certainly a very interesting fighter. I think that one of the interesting things was, I think it was, oh, there's a left hand. Right there on the jaw, kind of war. With Cuba Gooding Jr. was that one of his fights? He said they met at a barber shop. <laughs> Him and Larry <laughs> Johnson met at a barber shop too. <laughs> Grandmama. How about that? Yeah, Boyd Melson was the subject of a lengthy feature on the, uh, the HBO show Real Sports. Mm -hmm. Very, very interesting young man. And he's had to use his legs a lot in this fight because he only has one useful arm. But listen, it, at this pace, throwing 30, 40 punches around, he's fine with it. Ward really have to step it up and just throw punches, make it a rugged fight. That is if you want to win.
Let's turn these fires on. This is it. Final round. Last fight ever here at the Roseland Ballroom. This place is closing down. Of course, Broadway boxing will continue on at other venues around New York City. It better. <laughs> well, yeah, just the close of Roseland, but Broadway boxing continues. Absolutely. But we'll see Boyd Melson again on Broadway boxing, I'm sure. Good exchange by these two. Both guys. Yeah, we're, in, hooks. We're, we're in our ninth year of this series, and Mr. Adams and I have been here for the whole nine years. I'm about to look at your face for nine years. You know how hard that's been? <laughs> 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 wow, you see that? Boy, Melson threw a jab with that right hand, and he shook it as soon as he threw it. So I got a goal, Steve. For the 10th year, man, you got to fight more. All right. On you mean air. in the ring or on, on the air? On air. Oh, okay. Because in the ring, it'd be a mismatch. Uh, <laughs> my day's over. I'm too old and you're too good. <laughs> uh, you see Ward backing up now, and, and that kind of tells the whole story of the fight because when he needed to press the action, he couldn't or didn't. Maybe part of it was being uncomfortable against a lefty. And, and Melson, Melson's had moments like this, just where he's landed a couple of left hands enough to steal around. I think he's won this fight comfortably. And just as much because of what Ward hasn't done as what he's done. Yep. Yeah, we don't have enough time in the show now for me to say what um, Ward hasn't done. <laughs> that could be here for a while. But to give Melson credit, he overcame tonight. He had, he had difficulties, and even if it was against an opponent that wasn't pressing Sell him. Paul right. Yeah, he did what he had to do. And sometimes you got to win and look good next time. And once again, Boyd Melson, probably a middleweight now, no longer a junior middleweight. He couldn't make the junior middleweight or even the middleweight limit for this fight. So his future might be a, as a middleweight. I'm sorry, a guy with one hand, even 10 years removed from the sport, a guy with one hand is not going to stalk me like this. Well, Nelson's done it. Just the one blemish so far on his record. And Boyd. Boyd. And that's the fight. Ladies and gentlemen, after eight rounds of boxing, we go to the judges' scorecards. Judge Kevin Morgan scores it 76 to 76, even a draw. Judge Don Trella scores it 78 to 74. And Judge Julie Letterman scores it 79 to 73, both in favor of your winner by majority decision. Boyd, the Rainmaker Melson. So How Boyd Melson applause for Donald Ward. It's the majority decision. And the victory over Donald Ward after injuring that right hand and fought basically with just the left. <laughs> and he looked good fighting with just the left. So he's victorious. He now has 13 wins on his record. Let's hear from the winner. Here he is now with Steve Farhood. All right, Boyd Melson, you overcame a cut and you overcame what looked to us like clearly a, a serious injury to your right arm. Tell us exactly what, uh, what happened to your arm in the fourth round. I got hit in my brachial plexus. I know that's a big word. You're the only fighter in the world that could name the exact injury. <laughs> yeah, it was a, a, a bundle. I have a, you're right over here, starting from your neck around like your T2, you have a whole bunch of nerves that connect. You ever hear somebody get hit hard here, their whole arm goes dead. Elbow hit here. 
my arm felt like it weighed a thousand pounds. It went completely dead and numb. I thought I was having a stroke. The first time it happened, I got scared. I didn't understand what was happening. I couldn't even make a fist. It was so heavy. It was as if you just finished burning yourself out, lifting weights, and you can't, I mean, with muscle failure. And it stayed that strong for about three rounds. I thought the last round it was back. I remember I threw a hook. It was in slow motion, and I grimaced. And I heard you say, oh, he grimaced again. Yeah, I hear your voice. So it sucked. It sucked. I couldn't use my right hand. I had a good flow going the first three rounds. I was trying. I could do an up jab pretty well to keep some distance, but I couldn't put anything on it. What, what went through your mind? What adjustment do you feel you had to make to not only to win the fight, but just, just to get through the fight? Well, I listened to my coaches. Stay to the right more. Lean when you throw your right, your left hand, your straight left to get out of the way. I mean, I, I couldn't even keep, I wasn't doing this to be fancy. I couldn't really keep it up. So trying to lean to stay out of the way and, and throw the straight left. And coach said, he said the last round, he said, you haven't thrown one under yet. And this guy's started, he made, he made an adjustment in about the sixth round. He started doing that. I was shooting down, but you know, I was coming up too soon. I wasn't driving it like that. So I was still missing in the last round when I tried. I hit, him in, I hit him in the back of the head a whole lot when we got tied up. I wasn't purposely trying to do it. That's all that was being given. I was trying to turn it in. I think at the same time I was being held real quick. So, Well, you got through it. You did what you had to do to win. We know you struggled to make weight. The fight was originally 154. It ended up being at 160. Is Boyd Melson a, a middleweight now? I think so. I don't know. We'll see. Time will tell. We wish you luck and a very intelligent and uh, gutty victory tonight. You know, and I'm not going to say yes to a fight unless I'm under 165 before I say yes for at the start of the six weeks. And I think that's the best bet to go about. Well, continued luck, Boyd. Thank you. Hold on. Everyone here, did anyone here buy from Manatech down at the back so we can donate? No? Donate to Team Fight to Walk? All right. If not, fine. Um, Big Pop Baluk, are you here? Happy birthday, Big Tom Balukas. is a 66 today. I don't know if he's still here. Better not left. Thank you all so much for always coming to support me. Thank you all. I'm dead. You guys spend so much money on tickets all the time. I get to see you all. It's like I say, you get two times in your life where everyone comes together from all facets, a wedding and a funeral, and I get it like once every two to three months. And this is the end for Roseland. You were in the last fight at Roseland. Boyd Melson, congratulations. Let's get it back to Brian and Brian at ringside. All right, Steve, thank you very much. So what a way to wrap up boxing here at the Roseland Ballroom. Of course, Broadway boxing will continue on. Give me your final thoughts. Final thoughts. Good last dance with the perfect guy who donates and gives his heart to the world. So perfect opponent to end, perfect guy to end the Roseland with. Good performance. He did what he had to do to win with the handicap that he faced. Well, so with that, we're going to wrap it up. Been another great night of boxing here on Broadway Boxing. For Brian Adams, Steve Farhood, I'm Brian Custer. We'll see you again at the fights.